Thanks for listening to or watching the Upland Down Under podcast. Tonight's show is recording live on Thursday, 21st of March at 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. On tonight's show, we're going to catch up on the Upland market floors, of course, check in on the neighbourhood ratings for March. We had the South Lake Tahoe collection reveal. We're celebrating the apparent success of the new in-game chat system. There's an upcoming community meetup in Paris. And the biggest news to date through the week was, of course, Upland's inaugural movie premiere. Main topic for tonight's show is about the upcoming share and build airdrop drive for Sparklet. And as part of that, I'll be outlining a special breaking news video all about it that will go live very early a.m. tomorrow morning AEST time. We've also got a couple of quips about seasons and maybe I need to rename the quip segment quips because we've got uh, questions, insights, rants, provocations and statements this week because we've got a rant from the band about city releases to digest. And of course, we'll take a look at another Upland community member, Spotlight Care of the Dynamic Node Builders team. And Swally's got an extra special giveaway that he's gonna uh, outline to us as well. All that and more on this the Upland Down Under podcast. If you're wondering how you can take part in the live recordings of this very here show, I dropped the link to the live podcast in the NBA server so Thursday nights at about 6.45 p.m. AEST. Let's get in the breaking badly news and take a look at what's currently happening in the upland market floor stats now i have been very much on the buy for upx and sell for usd train as of late and some kind of interesting stuff to come out of that let's see how we go here let's see if this will work all right before i get into that though we've got our stats let's check in on the volumes or the 90 day averages transaction volume nice to see a bit of green here up 1.5 percent for the transaction volume trading volume also up a smidge up 0.3 percent unique active wallets down from last week was 64,600 and change last week now it's been over 62 and a half thousand this week total unminted properties Aside from all the new properties that came on board with the sales and whatnot that was going on, we did have almost 6,800 properties minted through the week. That's a significant number. So we're pushing down under 290,000 again. Uh, USD floors currently, what do we got? LA is the worst at the moment, 31%. Lucille is the best, 359%. That's an outlier. But what do we got? Fresno still holding up there, 95 Manhattan 94% and what else is sticking out Santa Clara I actually was looking at that if I was going to start buying and selling there but that was yeah the spread between those was too big 60% there and Staten Island as well hanging in tough there 92% for the USD floor as for what's actually actually happening in the markets Bakersfield getting smashed on the UPX was just under 9,000 last week now under 7,000 Berlin's up a dollar on the USD was eight dollars last week, nine dollars this week. Bronx is up on both the UPX and the USD. That's one of the areas I've been buying for UPX and selling for USD. Um, I had to actually, I had to go under four dollars to get sales. They sat there for two days, nobody gobbled them up. But then I did see, I saw a post or a tweet to us. It might have been Happy MFR actually, I believe. He was talking about he must have gobbled up the Bronx floor. He raised the price from whatever it was, $4 to $7 with just $70 or something. So I just missed out on his blitz there, which is a shame. I would have loved to take some Happy MFR's money. Maybe next time. Buenos Aires up a whopping 53% on the EPX, was 6,500 last week, now just under 10. And what else? Dallas up also 10% on the EPX, was 14,000 flat last week, now 15,500. A bit choppy everywhere else. What's going on there? LaSalle, look at that. Someone's trying to get out of LaSalle. Minus 75%. Was $300 the floor last week, now $75. So if you've been looking to get into LaSalle, that might be an option there. Everything else, choppy, choppy, choppy. Santa Clara up on the USD. That's interesting. When I looked at it, it wasn't looking that favorable. Uh, currently, you can buy for 43,900 UPX and sell for just under 20 bucks. Not too bad, actually. I might have to have another look at that myself. South Lake Tahoe, how's that doing? As a new release, um, up 2.6% on the UPX. Uh, floor at 20,000 UPX and up from $6 last week, up 33.3% to $8 this week. Staten Island, a bit flat there, and Stockton and everything else, not much going on. 
So yeah, a bit of a mixed bag. Um, currently, according to this, your best bet was to buy for UPX and Selfie USD in both Stockton and Trenton. Swally and I were going back with some forwards on that. Um, were you saying, Swally, the data on that all changes so fast it's hard to keep up with it? Well, the data on everything changes so fast that you can't keep up. You can say it's a snapshot, but it's not even that because it just changes so fast. Just on that LaSalle property, that, that floor hasn't moved pretty much ever since I started doing the numbers, but there was a, obviously a property added today that's selling at $75, which is still a massive mm. markup from the original mint price, but it's also got a, an apartment on it, so probably not a bad buy if you're actually really keen to get in there. Oh, nice, you uh-huh. checked out. Yeah, well, I was wondering when that showed up. I, I was wondering if that was one of those recent ones that people minted as part of, you know, the extra stuff that got sold. But if it's got an apartment on it, it wouldn't have been. Uh, it doesn't take that long to build an apartment. A couple of weeks. Yeah, if you're fully stacked. If you yeah. if you got your bag full of spark like you have, hint, hint, with your sign in the background there. <laughs> All right, we'll move on and have a look at the neighboring, neighborhood ratings. We kind of missed that last week. Um, I just kind of glossed over because I forgot to get it ready. So hopefully it works this week. Um, somehow, some way, San Francisco Midtown Terrace is still leading the charge, or although it is dropping as I continue to get as much out of decor map assets out of the joint and shipped around as I can. I believe it was 13.25 last week or thereabouts. So we're going backwards, and Quailwood is slowly creeping up. Um, 13.241. What do we got? We still got. Still got over a week left, so there's plenty of opportunities for Quailwood to make a big push there at the end, or any of the other ones there. Greenwich Village wouldn't take that much, especially... I don't know what the floors are like in Quailwood. Um, I know some of the other node pushers, they've made use of the market aspect. So if you buy up the secondary or whatever, uh, if you play around with those numbers a bit, it can it tends to push the score pretty quickly. So I have to wait and see. See what happens. All right, I believe that is all I had for that one. Now we did have the South Lake Tahoe collection reveal. Um, I don't know. Did anybody have any stories to share about that? How did you go? Happy with the collections? Disappointed? I uh, got one El Tahoe prop and three Tahoe keys, uh, and as predicted, they get a collection. So I'm okay with it. Just a uh, bought some of the uh, properties from the past owners who don't want them. Yep. But only these where I can build the new structure so I get huge amount of sparks I would need to finish all my builds in the next years. So maybe not as good as uh, as I thought the idea, but yeah, I think the spark exchange will. Not not only the spark exchange, but also some other guys I work with will get some apics to get my builds done. But I'm okay. Very good. And Swally, I saw you, you had some extras in the keys as well that you were looking to offload. Did you manage to sell those or what, what's your plan, Z? Sold a couple. Obviously disappointed that it's only a purple collection, albeit top end purple, but you know, it, it could be a 1.9 to a 2.0 from purple to orange and it makes a massive difference on price. Yep. You know, something about that color change that makes it price skyrocket but anyway so disappointing that it was only a purple collection but you know it is what it is sometimes you win sometimes you lose i missed out on pretty much everything i'd gone for um so you know i picked up a couple of purple collections but you know flipping a couple of those tar the keys properties but um yeah nothing special so yeah you win some lose some yeah, I was surprised to see that at Purple as well, um, a limited. I was thinking at least an exclusive. But... Well, that's what I was banking on. So I'd gone pretty hard at that on the release and picked up, I think, 10 in there. And I even looked at that Venice Drive, which around the outside, and I was thought the middle would be more um, higher demand, so to speak. Yep. And there was because the Venice Drive, like that outside edge, that was the last to mint. And I could have <laughs> could have minted so many in there anyway. You win some, lose some. I mean, Beach Road, Probably. you're never going to get that. But, yeah, not to, for that um, Tahu Boulevard not to be a collection, which a lot of people thought would be, is disappointing. But, you know, again, shit happens. Yes. Um, as I outlined last week, I kind of spent more than I wanted to, but I, I kind of... I did get up for the collection reveal. Um, I saw that there wasn't much around. The only one that really interests me was there was a big one in Tahoe Meadows. 
I was five point something mil. I looked at it and thought, well, it's not much point getting one of them. And there was a couple of others there, but I thought they were going to get gobbled up pretty, pretty quickly. So I went back to bed. And then what do you know, I woke up a bit later and it was still available. So I kind of went on the hunt and shout out to Sturgy Use. I managed to do a deal to pick up two extras on the secondary from him. And then I went and minted this big one. So the nice dividends on that one, 165,000 and change per month. So that almost gets me back to my magical 2 million Upex per month number. And that is with only, what have I got now? 600 and something properties, 657 properties. So I'm really kind of pushing for that. I want to get the least amount of properties for the most amount of dividends. That's kind of my whole play at the moment. Anybody in chat, Lily? Tahoe Island? Yep, that's a good one. Happy with that? Okay. All right, we'll move on. What else have I got there? So we had the t collection reveal, of course, and then, yeah, so celebrating the chatters. We kind of talked about the in-game chat system that they got up and running. Um, I wasn't really paying much attention to that myself. I tried to use it a couple of times and messages got deleted, so I got a jack of it and didn't bother again. But Squall Mozza today at just after lunchtime, our time, celebrating the chatters. He says, we knew we had a great community, but you really like to chat. We've reached over 110,000 unique chatters in the in-game chat. Really goes to show the power of community in GameFi. Not checked it out yet. Hop in and you can win Upex with our occasional challenges. Yeah, they've been doing a whole bunch of different challenges there through the, through the weeks. Yeah. Um, he picked he picked the channel with the most members <laughs> to display. Of course. Uh, yeah. Yes, and the general is about yeah, it's, I think uh, eleven thousand, maybe twelve thousand. That's the general, yeah. So let me have a look here. So we got. How do you see that? You just click on it. Yeah, click on it, and then um, chats, you get. It? No, it's in channels. No, that's my chat. Channels, then you click on it and you can click another time on the channel. The, this this little symbol, you know. Yeah. And yeah. there was oh, his number. Yeah, you go. You there was a the second one from the top that you needed to click on. Property listings, that's the one, yep. Yep. Oh, general is the one that Bill and was saying. Who's in general? Okay, well. It's 19,000. Right, but that's it's good to see there's plenty of people at least going on to that system because then hopefully that's more people that you can contact within the game and whatnot because that's always been a bit of a pain in the yeah, butt but if you can't get these, in contact these, with people. These channels are it's it's a mess like like the general in Discord. You get one million posts if you uh, blink once with your eyes. <laughs> yeah, and you it's not not easy to follow even if I say okay come I. Go down, take a coffee, go back up, and have to scroll millions and millions of posts back, uh, and um, can't catch up. This is, I, yes. I don't like it. Yeah, that's for sure. That's what I think I said last week. It's kind mm. of seems like it's going back to the bad old days of Telegram because yeah, it was just a nightmare to try and keep up with it all. But if it onboards the new players and gets them active, I suppose it's all well and good and worth it. All right, we'll race through it again, race through some other stuff. So there is, if you haven't seen it, if you're in Paris or if you want to go to Paris, you're heading to Paris, there is a community meetup that's being planned. Um, Nosif and Tandeman, I believe, they're behind that. Let me just see, there's two lots there. I think I'm still on there. Yeah, what's Lisette said here? Community meetup in Paris, located near Paris, uh, for everyone attending... Uh, Paris Blockchain Week. There you go. You're in luck. Join Metaverse Street Journal. That's Tender Man and Frontland Community. That's no sift for a community organized upland meetup. Friday, April 12th. And if you go on over there too, there's a, a bunch of stuff where you can register. I don't believe they've got a venue sorted out yet. Yeah, to be announced, but heaps of stuff there. Tans, re Tans run a bunch of these sorts of events before, and no sift's very well known in the community. Um, has a pretty big reach with everything that he's got going on. Um, if you didn't check it out as part of the totems, he did all sorts of awesome stuff there. Also runs car servers and whatnot as part of the Red Hook node, I believe. So if you're in the area, make sure you check that one out. It should be a good one. 
Right. What else have we got on the agenda? Oh, moving on. Now, I didn't get involved in this myself. Upland's inaugural movie premiere. It's, there was a couple of reasons why I didn't take a look at it. Well, I haven't taken a look at it yet myself. Um, was the timing. I was at work when it all kicked off. Um, it's also the platform only on mobile when I'm around at work and that sort of stuff. So I will endeavour to take a look when I'm on the laptop and I've got some time to sit down and have a play around. Um, did anybody get in there? Did you have a go? Did you manage to check out Left House's movie? I absolutely did. So I streamed it into the Discord cafe for people who couldn't get in there. And um, it went well. People were enjoying it. Uh, it is <laughs> very f bomby. <laughs> so yeah, much I so. Did see a bit of chatter about that. Yeah. yeah, I I was working, so I wasn't paying the movie as much attention as I would have liked to, and I ended up focusing on when the next one would drop rather than the movie itself. <laughs> well, the rest of the while. So you're waiting for it. Yeah, so it kind of distracted me from the actual dialogue. Do you think you go back and watch it at your own leisure at some stage? Yes, I think I need to give it what it deserves and pay attention and watch it. Um, yeah. I, I, I quite enjoyed what I did here while I was uh, working. So, but What was... I didn't see the mechanics of it. So within those systems, you go in there with your 3D avatar. Are you essentially watching... Like, am I looking at my laptop screen, which is looking at my 3D character looking at a screen? Is that how it's set up, or is it? Do you go full yeah. screen, or? So there is a stream mode. You can go straight to stream mode, so you'll just get the image. Um, yep. But if you don't do that, then you get your avatar's head, anybody sitting in front of you, the you know surrounding area and all that. Which, if I try to stream the stream. Um, mm -hmm. I usually crash, but I can do it if I'm just an avatar in there, which meant everybody's picture was quite small and I had to get up and move right in front of everybody at the stage so everybody else could see. Oh, gosh. So. And there was some issues with open mics or something, I believe. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the one about a certain person who got scared and let fly. <laughs> In sure, real I, didn't, life. I didn't know the specifics. I knew there was just the, yeah, there was a lot of hot mics or something happening. Yeah, there was a lot of touching the screen. So people were closing the curtain on the movie all the time and getting up on the stage in front of the movie. They all got turfed out, but yeah, it was very annoying when they were doing it. So all of those sorts of teething problems, I was sure they'll sort out. And especially now that uh, there's that own, they've got that own Discord server now, haven't they? The nowhere for Upland kind of thing for feedback. Yeah, but you can't read anything in it because all the channels are closed off and so you go in there and it's just the general chat channel and there's no permission to read anything else. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, boy. Yeah, there's no point Sounds being in there at paper. this point. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Yes. Leave well, it away. All of these things. Yeah, leave it a while. Happily, all of these things will just improve the overall system. Um. Yeah, Left House has done a whole bunch of stuff with these sort of short films and whatnot. I still remember back in the the original in-home experiences we had for the first Halloween experience, um, his, the video he put up for his, it, it was absolutely haunting. I'll have to see if I can track that down. It was it was next level weird. So, yeah, I'm oh, yeah, it was, it was a, a full-on professional movie, and it is not a short. It's a movie-length movie. Um, mm. yeah, so, you know, it does deserve a watch just so that you can even say that you've seen it because, you know, it's Upland's first movie. I'm sure he'll do more if he can, but it's the first one. Yeah, and it's going to be cool to see this get out into the hands of other folks as well. Um, Elijah Judah is a name that sticks out straight away, like a lot of the stuff he's got going on. I, know, I believe he does a lot of drone footage and stuff too. So, you know, the sky's the limit for where the tech and all of this could could go. Pretty exciting. Yeah. 
All right, so we're racing through it this week. That's good. Uh, I have got the main topic for this week's show pegged as Upland reveals the share and build airdrop drive. Now, I have to be a bit careful with what I go on here um, for reasons that will become a bit more apparent a bit later on, but we can have a general take a look at things and see. Um, one of the major things you should be aware of is if you do not yet have a Twitter account, well, you better bloody hurry up and get yourself one because it's it's going to be very important. Um, Upland's already kind of stated that with the way they've set this up. All of like this main link um, has come from the Twitter and whatnot. So yes, the share and build airdrop is coming. Um, I don't know who's not who's not on Twitter yet. Yeah, you better be. get yourself on Twitter. Hubby's not. As many upper hand people. He's not. We'll get him on there. Um, if you're a very new account, probably the best way to get your follower stats up and running is to just go to the Upland official account and just follow everybody that you can that's following Upland. Um, that'll probably be a good start. But yes, airdrops, uh, that's usually... We've, we've seen this system with the Gleam before where you've got to connect your your Facebook and you connect your Instagram and you connect your Twitters and you do this and you do that and you retweet this and you put a quote here. Um, that's how most of these airdrop systems play out. Now, one of the things to be very aware if you are playing around with that any sort of airdrop system, I keep saying it over and over again, but yeah, be very careful of what you're clicking on uh, airdrop systems for Web3 crypto are rife with scammers, phishing attempts, all sorts, all sorts of stuff. So make sure you're always clicking on official links if you're not sure. Um, yeah, triple, double check, triple check, do whatever you have to do. Um, just in general terms, uh, is are you excited about this? I know there's been a bit of chatter about. Um, the, well, there's been concerns raised that airdrops are great, but airdrops is essentially if you want to look at the core of it, it's free money. And people with free money, it's usually loose money. And it usually disappears pretty quick. They're willing to dump on floors and whatnot. Is that of any concern? Obviously, the upside is more eyeballs, more more community um, exposure and whatnot. The upside is that if we can afford it and we've got a use for it, we can snap it up cheap. That's exactly right. Yes. Yep. I've said that That's before when... Sense. I think when Sparklet releases, I think there will be a dump. I think the price will drop. Who knows? I mean, it's just moon mass to try and figure that out. But I think it will dump because we're conditioned to think that one Sparklet is 46 cents. So if you see it at 23 cents, I'm sure there's a lot of players out there thinking they're getting Sparklet at half price, which is a bargain in anyone's language. Absolutely. Bueller man, you're very quiet. What's going on? sidetracked and kinda I've just added you to the stage too I don't know if you wanted to chime in but yeah just just be careful um, like I said one of the main things is it is going to be heavily Twitter focused make sure you're on Twitter that's gonna be the big one now does it, if it sounds like I'm being quite vague or whatever yes I am being deliberately vague because well what do you know tomorrow morning very early a.m. I will be releasing a special version of the Upland Down Under podcast. It's just a very short video. Uh, what's this all about? Well, what this video is, it's going to outline all of the currently known details about the Sparklet airdrop system. So you might be asking yourself, well, how do I know all about it? Well, as a member of the Upland Contributor Network, as a UCN broadcaster, I had the opportunity to participate in a sneaky picky meeting hosted by the Upland team very early in my AM this morning. Uh, during that session, we were given an in-depth preview of the upcoming Sparklet airdrop campaign and other exciting developments. Um, I've already recorded that video. I was scrambling to get that done before we went live with this one. However, as part of that meeting this morning, there's a 24-hour NDA period which kind of sucks because it would have been perfect to be able to talk all about that tonight while we've got people on to ask follow-up questions and whatnot. But 
have to be a good boy, so I have to hold off on releasing that until tomorrow morning. So keep your eyes and ears out for that because there's also a special giveaway associated with that particular video. More details on that part of the video coming up in this show here soon. So yes, there's lots of details there. Uh, myself and many other, many of the other broadcasters will be putting out videos about this, no doubt. Um, be interesting. Uh, I'll certainly be trying to get along and have a listen and a watch to all of them just to get everybody's uh, perspectives on it. I um, worked with ChatGP, ChatGPT to put mine together for this. I fed it all of the details that we had all the background information, I fed it all the details and notes that I knew, plus some of my own very biased opinions, and bada bing, bada boom, it spat out a thing, and off we went. So, check that one out. Right, probably, unless anybody else wanted to talk about it, or have any questions about the sparkler airdrop, probably the less I say about it, the better, so I don't get myself in trouble. All good? All right, very nice. Moving on. Now, I said we should label this as quips. Well, we're going to run through our quips. If you weren't aware, quips is questions, insight, insights, provocations, and statements. Um, there is a link to a Google form in the description. If you submit one of those with your in-game name and we use it in the show, you're going to win yourself some kind of prize. Um, we've got another two quips from Rampant Quips are Angry Ursia this week about seasons. Um, some interesting interesting thoughts and suggestions here he starts off by asking do we think seasons will endure or will this fade like many of the past semi-regular events Ow. what do you reckon seasons here to stay absolutely seasons are here to stay i already believe that we're going to lose our daily login spark bonus because seasons will take over that making us log in regularly just to get our gamified earnings, which is 100% here to stay and for good reason. Um, I think seasons will only get better. Yep. Yeah, I'm of the same opinion. Everything they seem to be doing seems to be tying um, more and more into the entire concept. So, yeah, I'd be very surprised if they let this one fade. Although, what did you say before, Swally, when I showed you that? I want to give you the sneak peek of that thumbnail. What did you say? Yeah, but still no info on totems. So they, they do have oh, a habit of getting sidetracked by things. We can mention a thousand projects that they've started. That, but it comes back to this communication. If there's like everyone expected that totems would be done and dusted by Genesis Week, which obviously is not going to be now. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if it's going to not even done by this year the way they're going but it's not so much that we're having to wait so long for round two it's the fact that they're not talking about it they're not saying if there's an issue or you know if they've identified a problem just let us know what the hell's going on that, that they've got to try and fix something if there is a problem yeah. um but this yeah. lack of communication like nobody knows what's going on the market is slowly dropping for totems because you know no one's excited about it and a lot of i've seen a lot of people just selling their totems because they're like oh it's just too much hard work and maybe it is i don't know like we don't know if it's going to be worth it in the long run to be doing all this just sort of gambling but lack of information it's always the same story with upland just no communication yeah yeah, this, like back. yeah uh yeah sorry i got the call from work um at totems um uh, square musas wrote i don't i can't find it now but uh, he wrote that they are uh, checking the f uh, the first cycle if everything was okay blah 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 blah, blah. and uh, he don't think there will be much changes to the system but hey he he said this uh, collection disaster should not happen too so i don't give many on this uh yeah, if, if it's not come from, from Upland right now, but over these community managers. And um, yeah, it's lack of communication. It's uh, yeah, it's just eventually soon in the future, all this, uh, yeah, we're doing something new, way hey, and way hey, there will be a big airdrop of Sparklet, hey, and uh, one week, no more information or two. Uh, why not release everything if it's finished? Uh, why tease everyone and then they got... Um, bought by the silence 
and um, yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't take much to say you know a little update hey by the way um we're still working on you know yeah, so we're checking it. We, we, we plan it. on doing maybe in, in, in two or three months. Um, uh, please be patient. Uh, we try to get it the best as possible. Blah, blah, blah. All this. But no, just no word. The, the totem channel is full of memes when, 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 when. when and um, yeah, Danny, who is uh, buying all totems up, I think. <laughs> With hundreds of theory guns. Yeah, oof, yeah, we're all waiting with bated breath for cycle number two, absolutely. All right, so our season's here to stay, yes, so I would very much think so. Um, in a later quips, Angry goes on to say that he remembers a post or interview that mentioned how Upland activities will differ season to season. What specifically caught his interest was harvest season as a time for trapping rewards. What do we think blossom season will bring, as that's the one that's coming up next? It was, it was mentioned city releases will be organised as part of seasons. Possibly there will be a city release most seasons, but it would make sense that a city release will always be part of Blossom season. What else might we expect with Blossoms that symbolises renewal and new beginnings? Maybe something that will sit dormant and rewards will be reaped much later in harvest season. Interesting thought. And he's also just refreshed our minds that Frost is a winter themed season. Blossom symbolising renewal and new beginnings. Genesis celebrating Upland's anniversary. Sizzle capturing the essence of summer. Meanwhile, it's freaking winter here, but right now. Harvest, a time for reaping rewards. And Wonderland, a season filled with holiday festivals. So, any thoughts, predictions? What can we expect in Blossom season that's coming up here very soon? I have no predictions, but I hope he's 100% right with the challenges or missions changing because it would be boring as if it was the same every single season and just plan ahead and just you know, mix it all up and even if it's always different every even you know harvest season to harvest season is different like you know mix it all up make us earn our money i mean and to be honest it wasn't that hard like i didn't set out to get the 15.2 i just was doing my daily stuff making sure i easily got to the which if you're playing daily you easily get to the 14.7 um, there was only one or two challenges I had to go out of my way to do. One of them was cars, because I don't race, but mm. I think it was Laban and I sat here during a podcast one night and just knocked out our five races. Um, I don't think... Yeah, if you're a regular player, as TML said, like if you're anything more than a casual player, that's it's easy to get the challenges done. So mix them up, have them different. So, I mean, if next Blossom season, obviously we can't grow anything, but maybe we can build stuff. So, but... You know, there's already that there anyway, wasn't it, for the last one? But i got no predictions. Yeah, well, it's, it's definitely too early for life and all of that, like, you know, the introduction of trees or anything. That's that's all way too early for that. We've got the whole totem system to get sorted out before then, so maybe in future years, but definitely not anytime soon. Someone might be able to correct me, but I was looking at um, structural ornaments to see if there was any for the next season, and I couldn't find any. I didn't yeah. spend a lot of time. Uh, there are there are new new ones. Um, I yeah. just discovered some things on the blockchain which were minted and created and on the APIs, but I didn't so have gonna sell enough us... time to uh, to combine all this information to say. But there's hey, okay, currently this... there's currently none out there though, is there? No, yes. that was my question, and there aren't. But I did hear in the chatter in the. Um, UGC that somebody got some delivered to their factory um, so maybe wow. we've got some UGC ones it'd be nice I've got Somebody's... stuff ready to submit and I can't yeah. get it submitted let alone approved well these were long ago submissions yeah. I think um, I hopefully it's that toss form's it's... not open yet so no, I, I did look ahead marks. on that but um, yeah does that mean the Jackie Sai ones aren't part of Blossom Season? That seems a bit weird. Most of them are either Genesis Week or um, Winter Fest. Oh, that'd be Halloween, perhaps, then, is it? Yeah. And there's a few Halloween ones there as well. But most, I think even the Jackie, I, I can't tell you which one it was. I had a guess, I'd say it was Genesis Week, which a lot of them are. Mm. Um, but yeah, I couldn't find anything for Blossom. Squall. Yeah, I actually did ask Squall about it. And he said, oh, don't we have it, have them in game? And I said, no. 
because I'm a mm-hmm. big fan of ornaments and um, mm-hmm. I don't have any. So if I don't have any, chances are there are none. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, yeah, but, but there, yeah, so, it, it, so as I said, there are some some categorized as blossom, but um, yeah, I need to combine all the data in the database to get more information. The, oh, there okay. are some some there are some objects which got the category for blossom and season start at first April and season finish fifteenth of May and all this. Well, uh, someone's about to make a crap load of money, aren't they? If there's only one or two users that have got it approved. Name your Sounds price. Familiar, like I'm... when. The outdoor decor released, yes. Mm. I mean, if you were UGC and you wanted to win the competition, you would figure out who was not in your bracket and only sell to them and not <laughs> sell to anyone in your Ooh. own bracket. I mean, come on. Why nice. would you not be sneaky and do that? <laughs> we need to lose those brackets. So that did. I don't think that bracket worked for the last season. No, I it think... really didn't. I think 90% of the competition was in the one bracket, and then even you, Ben, your bloody bracket did bugger all, which was disappointing. But I know you've got better things to do, but, you know, I've got well, the properties. I, I just don't have one up. Yeah, one. I ended up putting one up, but I was too late for the snapshot or something. Yeah, you know, I just, I left it all too late. So I'll be on to it for next season. Like I if said, I... There are none. The season after. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That I got involved in it, but realised I was up against, I don't know if he was a creator, but he's definitely a shop owner that had 80-something of them, and I just went, you know what, there is no chance I can beat this player. And to think yeah. that, you know, players like from upland level or whatever, you know, are getting much better rewards than I can get coming. Like, I think I stopped when I was second, but I think I dropped down to about fifth or six. I stopped looking in the end. But to think yeah. that, you know, I put that much effort and money into it and someone at upland level, you know, puts one up and gets a much better prize, it's a little bit disheartening. Yeah. Absolutely. Especially, even, like, right, so I had more than them. everybody else in every other bracket, and I got a BE, yeah. but, you know. Did you get a... I didn't get a BE. I didn't get anything. Well, it, it's in there that you get a BE. It hasn't arrived oh. yet, but... You I haven't had any notification of any award. Uh, no, they did the list of winners, so it's in the winners channel. Oh, I need to go look then. I don't know. Like yeah. I said, I gave up the after, I think, the second week. I think the answer there, Lily, is you're just going to have to upgrade to Chief Exec. Oh, come <laughs> on. Where am I going to get to 78k? <laughs> She's doing the finger to me here. In... About really that. am. Well, that's a 4x for me, and I'm not getting there anytime soon. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for those angry. It's food for thought at the very least. Um, yeah, I'm sure we'll. it's one of those things we're just going to have to wait and see, unfortunately. All right, next up, we've got a rant from the one and only LeBan. Now, I did see this popped up a, a week or two ago, and I've been holding off because it's a good one. It's all about city release planning. He starts off by asking, oh, I won't say what he's written, but I'll change it to, why the Fraggle Sticks has Upland stopped showing property prices prior to release? Um, this was obviously before South Lake Tahoe release because he says it's now six hours away from South Lake Tahoe release. And properties still aren't showing any prices. Why are Upland so secret about it? It would be nice to plan ahead to where to spawn our block explorers based on wallet inventory, make a plan for the release. And he's putting his old man hat on here and saying, I remember back in the good old days, this is what we did. We made plans prior to the release. Yes, I've been whinging about that for the longest time. Back to the good old days. We used to get the property lines up days if not weeks before we used to get the mint prices on all of the properties showing days if not a week before it gave us plenty of time to make plans especially those of us who were making node pushes and whatnot um why they would hold that off to the last minute i can only think it's it's a deliberate tactic to fuel the fomo and the rage and i i don't know that there has there has to be a specific reason that they do it because they've never gone back since they started down this direction. Does it annoy the absolute crap out of everybody else? No, because I just, my, with my internet, I mint wherever I am at the time and I actually hope that I'm not over properties that I can't afford. <laughs> that's oh, so that's it's, my it's only a thing. positive for you almost, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. 
Okay, uh, I well, I found a blossom structure ornament. Okay, with a hundred a, hun a hundred birds, a mint one of four. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, there's, there's not very many of those in there. Yeah, uh, yeah, they got blossom April one to May fifteen. I'm pretty yeah, sure they were penny? prizes. Mm. Um, I don't think you could even buy those. At, uh, cool Nikos in uh, Staten Island. Yeah, thing. so for the city releases, yeah, I, I think that, I think it sucks, but obviously there's there's a method to their madness. There, there must be something in the data that shows it's beneficial for them to do it like that. But yes, personally, I would much rather have all of that information well and truly in advance. So, hopefully you got what you wanted in the end, LeBan, after all that raging. Um, thank you for being in the midst of your age and taking some time out to submit a quips. If you wanted to submit a quips, just like Angry and the band did, who have both earned themselves 10,000 UPEX after fees, rem reminder that you just have to click the link to the, to the um, Google form that's in the description and make sure you include your in-game name. Otherwise, I can't send you a price. All right, we'll race on through these last bits and pieces in this week's Getting to Know Community Members segment, care of Mesme and other members of the Dynamic Node Builders. They are featuring TB125, who was an extremely valued member of the old UDU podcast format and one of the community pioneers when it came to setting up and running multiple meta benches all under the same overall branding. TB125 is currently an executive with a net worth just under 41.5 million UPX, with 342 properties and a bit over 25 and a half spark. His home residence is in the St. James's neighborhood of London, which if my memory serves me correct, was one of the earliest spawn neighborhood development collections. Uh, before we go and check out his responses, I'd just always like to go and have a look at, just have a bit of a squeeze, a bit of a sticky beak at people's progress charts so over here on upxland.me and looking at his progress chart this is a very interesting chart indeed starts off very slow um, 8th of february 2022 30 properties 33 properties and then boom, up to 50 a couple of months later and then climbing 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 then some massive jumps and then right up there and then a big drop off had 329 properties down to 250 and then climbing back again um, also interesting the properties net worth graph and the mint net worth graph gets pretty close here and there in a few different spots but then separates and comes back again so all in all tracking up a bit of a hodler it would seem all right let's check out his responses. So, in game name TB125 has been playing Upland since December. What did I say? I said February. I don't know what the discrepancy is there. Um, been to Vegas. Yes, lived there. Celebrity he knows the most about King Charles. And there's some drama going on with that family at the moment. Although I don't suppose there's ever not any drama going on with them. If TB125 could start a charity, he would start a jigsaw puzzles for mental health dementia. Sounds pretty much on track what what he's already doing. Tattoos, no, bucket list, visit all the US national parks. Famous fact about where he lives, spa water, guilty pleasure, Vegas craps. One thing he will never do again is climb a high, high mountain. Must be a story behind that. Superpower, making money vanish. Well, yeah, guilty pleasure, Vegas craps, they go together, don't they? Pet peeve, chewing with your mouth open very guilty of that at times and three uplanders you chat with regularly Dak, Mitar35 and Mass Chef. Good on you mate. Um, yeah TB was in, just rather reminded me that TB was in a, one of the new format podcasts a few episodes back as well. So shout out to TB125. If you would like to get yourself involved or you know of someone who the community might be interested in learning a bit more about as I keep saying, then send Mesme or any of the other Dynamic Node members a DM. Or click the link to the DMB Discord server that's in the description of the show. Say good day and tell them the UDU podcast sent you. All right, a few extra little bits and pieces to wrap up on. Um, let me go cherry sherry here. Bit of a self-pluggage. Where is it? This one. 
So I would suppose if you're watching this on YouTube, you know already about this, but if you're on the Spotify, you won't be able to see it anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, did you see the recent follow-up interview I did with Scooby as part of the Metaverse and Beyond podcast series? If so, thank you for sticking with it through all of the audio and connection issues. Turns out that my headset microphone doesn't work. Something funky with my new laptop, and I have to buy a USB USB microphone, which I'm currently looking into. Um, if you didn't catch it, well, it was great to catch up with Scooby again, who is someone I've known and been involved with in the Upland Metaverse community for a very long time. Scooby has been heavily engaged as an Upland community member and an Upland community creator. If you weren't aware, Scooby was one half of the crew that first kicked off the Upland Cafe channel. Um, he has returned to aspects of that just done it again is returned to aspects of that after taking about a year away from the platform recently to focus on other things i last recorded with scooby way back in august 2022 and the majority of our chat for this latest interview was focused on discussing some of the many events and eventualities that have happened in and around upland since then scooby never pulls any punches and always tells it like it is which is something i've always enjoyed and appreciated and i'm hoping that scooby might return to regular broadcasting sometime soon I used to run um, this kind of semi-weekly or sometimes fortnightly podcasts. Um, yeah, I really miss that show. That, that was always a good one. So check that one out if you haven't. Let me bounce out of there. Now, I did mention before when we were talking about a few different things that the contest for this week is going to be a little bit different. But before we do that, we've got a few things to give away. And now, Swally was... Swally and I was going backwards and forwards through the week, and he gave me some some good ideas on a few different things, bits and pieces to do with this segment. So we're going to trial that the first time this week. So if you weren't aware, last week's challenge was to get yourself in the contest channel with the amp, within the NBA server. Let us know how you think the transportation mechanics of map assets is going to play, is going to play out, and what you will or won't be doing to get ahead of it all name is going to roll in a list of all entrants for a chance to win 10,000 UPEX after fees and of course get yourself another entry into the 2024 end of year giveaway prize draws that's all very standard that's what we do each and every week so we will go ahead and run that draw and then I'll let you know what's going on with the other stuff that we're doing as part of that all right everybody's here 10,000 UPEX after fees Well done. Let me write that down. Jacob. Jacob 10K. Congratulations. Now, Swally, are you going to go and do your thing? And I'll go and I'll do one extra thing while you're doing that thing. And we'll go from there. Let me get out of that. And let me go back here. So, as part of this, I'm going to start trying to make a bit more of effort. Like you, watchers and listeners, and members of the server, you go to the go to the trouble of putting an entry in there and I'll kind of just throw some up hex at you and say thank you very much. Well, let's dive into a bit more than that. Um, every week I'm going to try and pick, um, sometimes it might be the funniest, sometimes it might be the most outrageous or the most insightful comment and I'm going to give a little bonus prize as that. This week I've picked Jabna Media's entry. Um, I'm going to send Jabna Media 5,000 UPX as a bit of a bonus after fees for the entry that says, I think they will finally roll out the trailers for the semis before they launch transporting of crates. How fleshed out the logistics will be upon the first capabilities of shipping? Question mark. I think they will do it in stages. I do hope that when it is all said and done, they have a shipping company meta venture that allows you to separate your personal block explorer and location from your shipping logistics. Very important point, that one. That way you can have all of your vehicles and block explorers attached to the meta venture. Um, you don't have to worry about if your personal block explorer is in the right spot for minting and treasure hunting and whatnot. Um, we did see people get caught up in that that whole drama with, you know, their car is their block explorer and their account is tied up to a car that's tied up to eight hours of travel or, or something crazy. So yes, a little bonus prize there for Jabna Media. And Swally, how'd you go? Did you manage to find Jacob's entry? Yeah, it's there in the chat. 
So Jacob's entry was, I think they are going to implement shipping for cars first. That is why they aren't allowing overseas drives. I think it's already in the works. Oh yeah, thank you for that. Right, so there's not only one chance to win a prize for the weekly challenge. There's now three, really, because you get that the main wheel, you get the bonus one, and of course, every entry you put in goes towards the big end of year prize giveaways as well. Um, this week, we're going to do things a little bit differently before the uh, for the weekly challenge. However, Swali is also celebrating a pretty big milestone. Um, do you want to outline what you got going on there and how we're going to run that, Swali? All right. So, barring any major catastrophes, I should hit the big five zero this week. No, I'm not talking about my age. I am talking about Spark. Still a couple of years away from fifty years old. Um, so, you know, it's, I've been working pretty hard for the last 18 months or so to get there. So it was originally my goal to get to 50, which obviously I did a little bit quicker than I first anticipated. So I'd like to do a little bit of a giveaway before I get stuck back into building my three pages of outstanding builds at the moment. Um, so since Ben's not going to do a contest in the contest channel this week, I'll take over and do that. So all I need you guys to do is to post an address. Now there are some limitations to this. So for every ten entries that we have, I will do I will max out a build and complete it. So if we get to eleven, I will do two. But it has to be a unique build. So one of the limited only unique builds from like Miami, um, Queens, like South Lake Tahoe, Tokyo, any of those limited builds that they've come out with. I know a lot of players have got them sitting around without the spark to finish them off. Um, so all you need to do is just list an eligible build in the contest channel. I'll just check all those. If we can get to more than 10, I'll do two and I'll max them out and have them built in about a week. So you know, I should hit 50 by the, by next, the, by this time next week. So if we get to more than 20 entries, I'd be impressed and I'll do three, but I, yeah, challenges on you guys there, but it's only one per person. So I want to spread it out. I don't want one person taking up all of them. Ben can just build it, spin the wheel. And we'll do those builds and try and get some buildings knocked up. Very cool. Thank you very much for putting that up. And I don't want to prematurely jinx you and congratulate you. So we'll just say, go for it, mate. Looking forward to when you inevitably do hit the big 5-0 mark. Um, yes, so make sure that is, yeah, that is in the NBA server in the contest channel. Um, we're not going to run the weekly challenge through there this week. So that's just going to be its own separate little thing for Swali's giveaway. Now, that means that if you put an entry in for Swali's giveaway and you do what I'm going to outline for the usual weekly challenge, you will get two entries in for the big prize draw giveaway at the end of the year. So a bit of a bonus there, an extra bit of incentive as well. Right, so that brings us on to, so what are we going to do for this week? Well, this week's challenge, as I said, it's a little bit different, so take note. Um, if you happen to see just before I shared a thumbnail of a video that's coming out, uh, keep your eyes and ears out for that breaking news episode about the Sparklet airdrop event. It will be going live in, I don't know, what's it? Uh, probably eight hours or so, 4.30 a.m. my time. Um, if you happen to catch it on the Spotify, you will have to jump over to the YouTube afterwards to take part. Uh, if you haven't already done so, you know, it's a bit of a courtesy. So subscribe to the channel, like or dislike the video, whatever you want to do, and then share your thoughts on Upland's airdrop in the comments below the video. Don't put that comment in this video. Um, I might catch it and be able to transfer it over as an official entry. Um, I might forget. So make sure you do it in the proper video that's going to go live after the regular UDU podcast one and make sure please make sure that you include your in-game name in that so yes just put a put a note in there to say what you think about what you think about the video or what your thoughts are on the uplands airdrop in general so successful entries as outlined will go into the running to win 25,000 UPX after fees I'm bumping it up uh, because I'm making you go through, jump through some hoops, doing something a little bit different out of the ordinary, 25k after fees and a Samurai Aquatics map asset. And that will be drawn in next week's Upland Down Under podcast as just part of the normally weekly draw. And of course, as I said, don't forget, that will also get you another entry 
into the 2024 end of year giveaway prize draws. So lots of ways to get involved and win some Apex, whether it be the quips or you know getting your comment in for the regular stuff and any of these little bonus bits and pieces. And that brings us on one last thing to do is to do the Upland, what was I going to say, the Upland Down Under Live Participants Podcast Wheel. Pretty sure I grabbed everybody who jumped in. Thank you very much. Hopefully, um, Elslack hasn't fallen asleep with his AirPods going on, blasting in his ears. Imagine falling asleep with my horrendous voice blaring in your ears. Let's see who's going to be. This is going to be a Samurai Aquatics Guard Bridge or a Love Punch Jacuzzi. Man might have it. Feel the man. His luck has returned. There we go. After Swally's recent domination. <laughs> Wait, congratulations, mate. Man, that's it. There we go. I noted that down. Let me jump out of there. Let me close there. That's all I've got this week. Um, anybody else got anything to spam, promote, shill, whine about, whinge about, celebrate? No. Don't want to get started got, right at the end. Got the financial Maybe. district property in Manhattan from the traveler passes. I haven't gotten any of my properties or my car from the road trip bundles yet, but we'll see. I got it yesterday, though, so does anybody know how long oh, that takes? Or... Um, I don't know. Lily, you might be the best to advise on that. You've been, been seeing the chatter here and there, if you're still there. You have to check your prop. Also, I I don't got any emails to. Um, there's a link in the Discord live updates with the list of properties which are reserved for you, and then uh, you just need to go to it. But if it's from the first batch, I think all these uh, snipers which are lurking around these properties to get unlocked are already taking it. Um. Yeah, and if you bought, I think it's after Friday. I don't think that they've delivered yet. Um, ah, so sure, how sure. long I, since, since you yeah. bought? I bought it yesterday, so. Yeah, yeah. it might take a few days. And um, I don't know if you'll get an email or if the list just gets updated. So check the list. Oh, so yeah. f from from now, they normally they update in around eight hours. From now on, it's uh, the, the short after they start working on the West Coast in the US. Um, but not every day. Maybe they skip one day and then do the, do uh, do it in in one batch the day after. Yeah, Soon, just, eventually just in checking. the future, you'll get your properties. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah it's I not, it's not instant in any Sorry. way. Mm. Yeah, and I did see there was a few people upset that, hey, where's the email? Like, that's a fairly well-established system that you get sent an email to suddenly not do that. And I don't know, maybe it wasn't put out there well enough, like how the system was going to change. And then it was interesting to see, um, I think it might have been this morning, I was looking through general and, yeah, some of the people who were at the properties ready to gobble them up then they were disappointed that the properties didn't um they weren't available to mint right at the time they were supposed to mint again so it's all a bit of a kerfuffle yeah i don't know how they couldn't um just make everybody wait until they all sold because that would have made more sense in that bracket wait till that whole bracket sold mm. yeah, before you moved on yeah I don't know, maybe it's just one of those things where they'll take lessons away and improve the system system for next time. I have to wait and see. Anyhow, so yes, make sure you check out that special video that I'm putting out there. Make sure you check out all the other broadcasters. As I said, they're going to be putting videos out there. Get involved, ask questions once, because that's kind of going to be the... We'll be cracking the seal on that information, and I'm sure the community's going to have a lot of follow-up questions. There's probably a lot of stuff that they, they didn't cover as part of it all so um yes uh it was interesting there was a few questions were asked and they were really reluctant to answer them or they weren't able to answer them in a roundabout way so yeah there's as much as we say that uh it sucks that we don't have the information about totems and whatnot uh just know that they are all guns blazing flat out trying to get this sparkling uh airdrop system up and running and probably everything else that's associated with, with 
market as well. Hopefully it all plays out for the better and we'll have billions and billions of new users all pumping our bags. So, have to wait and see. On that note, a reminder that if you're in a time zone that fits in with the Thursday night recording schedule of starting at 7pm AEST and you'd like to get involved in this podcast live, the link to the weekly podcast will always be dropped in the NBA server about 15 minutes before we kick off the show. That invitation extends to any of the podcast productions I do. So if you have an Upland NFT or Metaverse product service or event to promote, then sling me a DM. Ben68 or get yourself into the NBA server which is linked in the description on that note that's got up I've already run the live play wheel Swally that was won by Billaman oh sorry <laughs> I was busy well, typing a message <laughs> <laughs> well done B-Man you might have been you, I thought you might have been racing LeBan again so you looked a bit busy so I lost right, our route <laughs> week, everybody we'll catch you later <laughs>